I'll show you a trick that I use to get my foreground objects to seem more three-dimensional instead of just like flat cartoons just layered in front of another. It's uh, because I don't really know what it's officially called, I'll just call it backlighting because in photography if you were if you were looking at a person and you want to make a subject interesting, you, you get a secondary light source and hit it from, you know, like the shadowed side of that person. Just like, just like my face has, has this brighter side and then it has this dimmer side. Well, there's a light here. It's just dimmer than this light. Well, to make something interesting, you just hit it from, uh, you hit it from an angle that's, that's a little bit behind it and to the side. So you just catch the edge. And so I'll do that exact thing on this mermaid figure that I've got on the edge of the ship rail. I'll show you how I do that. I've got my bright side where the direct light is hitting. And so I'm going to have this be an indirect light on this side. And it's going to be a contrasting color to this. So this is very orangey. So I'm going to make this real blue purple, which is just going to represent the indirect light from this big blue sky that's all around. By taking the color of the, the majority of this background and putting it into a backlight on the edge of an object, it kind of tells your eyes that that object is wrapping into that environment. It pulls it in. So it doesn't look so much like just a separate layer like it does right now, just a hard outline. Watch how big of a difference this makes. I'll go... Um, I'll make my normal shadow color, which is this brown, and that's just red, yellow, and blue. I'm going to show you on my professional painter's palette right here. Okay, red, yellow, blue. All right. That's good enough. And then I'm just going to add, where is my blue? I'm going to get my sky color and add it in, but I'm going to find it. All right, here. Okay, so then I've got my sky color, watch. See this blue? I'll add that in. So this color needs to be, it's a light source, so it needs to be lighter than the shadow, than my darkest shadow anyway, on this. Okay, then I'll just come across the front side of this mermaid girl right here. Yeah, I'll put it on. I'll give her, I've got her hand kind of right here, so I'll. Like this, make an arm. Okay, then she's got a shoulder that comes up here. So, give her those oyster shell bra cups right here. See? So what this does is it makes this shape look like it's got sides that curve away on both sides rather than just being satisfied with the shadow side and a light side. On my shadow side I add a little bit of this backlight to bring out the curved edge. I'll kind of stay off of the I'll kind of stay off of the underside on this one so that that stays dark. So anywhere I have an upward facing side, I'll put more of it, it'll be a thicker line. Anywhere I have a downward facing side, it'll be a thinner line. So like, well, I'll leave that. I want her boob to cast a shadow right here, so. Okay, we'll go like this. There we go. We could even make, just by using the shape of this line, I can make it look like she's got some 
ribs or you know just make the anatomy a little more detailed her forehead's kind of upward facing so I'll make it bigger right there then over here I'm well, and then she's got another arm here. Let's do that. And on the edge of this scrolly thing. Like that. Up here. Where else can I do this? Put a little bit right there. We can even give her a little bit of a cheek, you know, like. You have to you have to always keep in mind that that paint dries a darker shade, so I always mix it a little bit lighter than what I want it. You have to get used to that when working with this kind of paint. Let me get you at a better angle to see the effects that that has. Have a much more dramatic um, three-dimensional object in the foreground. Not only does it look more three-dimensional, but it looks more interesting because it has those opposite color contrasting tones on either side. So I can definitely perfect this and try to make the gradation between the light and the shadow uh, more even and add more intermediate tones, but that's that's the basic right there. So look at this mermaid over here. Where I did this, did the same thing. See, oh right there. Same thing on the opposite side of the room. And one thing that causes this one to look real three dimensional also is having the gradation of the clouds behind that solid dark object. Whenever you have a gradation of color, so so by gradation I just mean how it's blended right here see the it goes from the gray to the white well that blend that that continues behind this solid object causes a sense of of depth also it makes that seem like a separate layer behind this layer that doesn't match that same gradation over here I've got the same backlighting effect on my ropes you can see the underside of these knots and this same thing I just added that bluish purple color of my indirect skylight to the shadow color of the object that I'm backlighting. I did it all across this mural. Everything has got it to give it that extra little pop to look like a three-dimensional shape. I especially like the way I spent more time on this. See how I've got that same kind of purple glow behind that one? So you can go crazy. Use it on all the stuff you paint that little strip of a backlit edge tells you so much about the shape of the object. So now I've gone over it and just worked on the details, fine-tuned the shape of it, and added intermediate tones between my uh, backlight side and the dark shadow and, and uh, things that I'm not going to cover in this video, but don't get mad at me and say like, you changed it and then did the final shot. Of course I did. Just want you to see. <laughs> just want you to see what difference it makes to have those two light sources.